Grade 10, Solving Linear Systems, and today we're going to talk about elimination. Now, elimination is the third technique that we've worked on. Remember, the first was graphing, the second was substitution, and now we're using elimination, which I think is um, the best one to use. It's, it always works, it's easy to do, and it's one that you're going to use in both grades 11 and grade 12. Now, I had a bit of a bad day here. I already started this video, as you probably can tell from all the work that's on here. But um, I don't have time to go back and do it all over again. I was just about ready to cry. So here goes the lesson. Um, first, we're going to talk about equivalent linear systems. So if you multiply an equation by a constant other than zero, you do not change the graph of the equation. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So what he I did here for you was show that if I took the equation 2x plus y equals 10, and I multiplied it by 2. Now recall that when you multiply an equation by a constant, you have to multiply each and every term by that constant. So here what I did was I multiplied everything by 2, so 4x plus 2y equals 10. And then I showed that if I rearrange this equation, put it into y equals mx plus b format, and this equation into y, y equals mx plus b format, that they are exactly the same equation, which means that when I go to graph them, it's going to be the same graph. Now this is important because when we're trying to solve a linear system, we want to know where the lines intersect. So if I'm graphing it and it doesn't make a difference to the graph, then that's great, right? We'll still find the right, the same point of intersection. Now in elimination, what we're going to do is we're going to add or subtract these equations together to get a new equation. So it's important that you understand that when you add or subtract equations of a linear system, the graphs of the new equations are different. So they're different lines but they pass through the same point of intersection. Hooray, right? Because if they pass through the same point of intersection, then that's going to be able to, we're going to be able to solve the original system by just working with these equations in different ways. So what I did first of all here was I wrote out this equation, 2x plus, or x plus 2y equals 4 and x minus y equals 1. And I said, okay, what if I add these equations together to get a new equation? So you can see that's what I did here. x and x is 2x, 2y plus minus y is 1y, and 4 plus 1 is 5. And then I subtracted the equations. Now subtracting is the trickier way to work with equations because as you know, when you subtract, sometimes those minus minuses make you make little mistakes and then you're very frustrated. So look, I subtract. I get rid of the x's. I eliminated them, right? See, the, they're gone. Now I only have one variable in my new equation. So 2 minus minus 1 is 3, and 4 minus 1 is 3, so y equals 1. The next thing I did to prove that this was still true, that we're going to still find the point of intersection, that all four of these equations, one, two, let's call this one here, three, this one's three, and this one's four, all four of these equations pass through this same point of intersection. Okay, so let's watch how that works. So if I take the first equation, this one here, and I wrote it into y equals mx plus b format. So that one goes here, right? So I simplified it. I got this equation. Equation 2, I brought the y over here and the 1 over there, and I got y equals x minus 1. Equation 3, rearranged, y equals, bring the 2x over, becomes minus 2x plus 5. And equation 4 was y equals 1, and I wrote a 3 here. Why did I do that? y equals 1. Okay, so now I graphed these. Here's the four lines. So equation 1, so I had a y-intercept of 2, a slope of minus 1 over 2. So down 1, right, down 1, 
right two. There's the next point. Down one, right two. There's another point. Then I drew the line. There's my equation one. Equation two, the y-intercept was minus one. It had a slope of one. Remember, that's like one over one here. So I go up one, over one, up one, over one. And I end up right at this point here. Two for two. Equation three, I had a y-intercept of five and a slope of minus two over one. You can always put it over one, right? That helps. So down two over one, down two over one. I'm right here again. And the last equation, of course, when y equals one, that's this line here. Remember, y equals one is a horizontal line going through one. All the y's are one on this line. And you can see that by adding or subtracting these equations, I have not changed the point of intersection. And that's key for you to be able to, um, to solve linear systems. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. And this is where I realized that my video wasn't running. So here, we started with this equation here. And I did it in two ways. So the first one, I decided I was going to eliminate the x's, get rid of them, subtract them away from each other, or add them to each other and make them go away, right? We're eliminating. So x minus an x would be zero x's. So I decided to subtract. Make sure you write that minus sign here. Notice that the x and the x have the same sign. They're both plus, plus, plus one, plus one, right? And the rule for my students was always, if they have the same sign, you subtract. Different signs add. Okay, so same sign, subtract. So I subtract those, and minus y, minus a plus y is minus 2y. 3 minus 7 was minus 4, divide by minus 2, and I got y equals 2. Remember that we're trying to find a point of intersection. So a point of intersection means you need x and y, right? You need both of them. So I had to find an x. To find x, I substitute y into either of these equations. So if I put um, y equals 2 into this equation, I have x minus 2 equals 3 and x equals 5. Or if you put it in here, if I put y2 here, I just do 7 minus 2. Right? So 5, 2 is a point of intersection. Make sure you list your x, then your y. Sometimes when you do them in different order, you'd say 2, 5, and really you meant 5, 2, right? Be careful for that. Okay, so then I said, what if I added the equations together? Notice that if I add the equations, these two are going to be eliminated. So it's like if I had minus 2 plus 2, that's nothing. Minus y plus a y, no y's. And that's great because I have two x's equal 10 and x equals 5. No big surprise that it's the same as we got over here. It's just a different technique. When x equals 5, 5 minus y equals 3, minus y equals minus 2, and y equals 2. So we get 5, 2 is the solution of the system of equations, or 5, 2 is the point of intersection. Same thing, right? Same didn't matter if I added them or subtracted them. And that's what you're going to be making a decision about as you go through the exercise. So I have another couple of examples here. Actually, I have, uh, I think, four more to do. And then in the next video, what I will do is do some examples of questions that have, that have um, fractions and um, decimals in them. A little bit trickier, okay? So let's take a look at this equation here. x plus 3y equals 7 x plus y equals 3. What one would you want to eliminate? What would you think would be the best one to eliminate here? So obviously the best one to get rid of would be the x's because there's one and one here. We're going to get into some situations where they're not the same in the next example. So I'm going to label my equations. It's always a good idea and that way you know what you've done. 
Now this time, like I said, these both have a one, so it's very easy for me to um, do elimination on this by just simply subtracting the equations. And again, by eliminating, I'm just trying to get rid of one of those variables. I can get rid of these x's just like that. x take away x, no x's. 3 minus 1 is 2y. 7 minus 3 is 4. So that means that y is equal to 2. Oh, that's great. I've got y equals 2. And again, this was same sign subtract, right? Same sign. And then I have to find the x. So I would say when y equals 2, I'm going to use the second equation. So I'm going to use x plus 2 is equal to 3. And that means x is equal to 1. So therefore, the point of intersection is 1, 2. Or you can say the solution of the system of equations is 1, 2. That was pretty easy. Okay, let's go on to some where the numbers aren't always the same. Like, look at here. If I added these equations together, I would have 3x's, 5y's. I didn't eliminate either of them. If I subtracted them, I'd have a negative x and I'd have a negative y. So still, I'm stuck with two variables. I want to get rid of one of the variables. So let's label the equations, 1 and 2, and make a decision on how could we make um, one equation have the same coefficient with one of the variables. So obviously this one, if I multiplied this equation by 2, then I would have two x's, right? Four y's, doesn't matter what the other ones are, because these would match. So I'm going to write right under here, equation one times two. And that's telling your teacher what you've done. Or you can say two times one, whatever. Two times equation one is going to give me two x plus four y. You know what I'm doing, right? Minus six. So I did this whole equation here times 2. Every term times 2. And now you can see that I have the same sign here. So I'm going to do same sign subtract, right? Subtract them. And that's going to eliminate my x's. So I'm going to put my big pink minus sign over here. And those ones are gone because 2 minus 2 is no x's. And 3 minus 4y is Oh, I'm just going to use a color. So that's minus y and minus 4 minus minus 6. Minus minus, okay? Be careful here. So that means I'm adding 6. That's going to give me 2. And that means that y is going to be equal to negative 2. Okay, now remember, once you've got the y or one of the variables, you still have to find the next variable, right? You've got to find the next one, the other one. Okay, so here we go. What are we going to do? Um, we're going to say when y equals minus 2. Uh, let's use the first equation. So I'm going to say x plus 2 times minus 2 equals minus 3. Okay, so x plus 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. So this is x minus 4 equals minus 3. And I'm going to bring minus 4 over here, and that's going to give me x equals 1. So therefore, 1 minus 2 is the point of intersection. Okay, so in order for me to do this, I had to multiply one of these equations, right? And that's okay. Remember, we talked about that at the beginning of the lesson. Okay, two more, and then we'll leave that for today and move on to a different one. Okay, example four. This time I have 2d equals 10 plus 4e, and 3d equals 6e plus 15. Now, remember I said at the beginning that it's really important that you line up these e's and constants so that you can um, you can see better when you go to add them together or subtract them that they're all lined up nicely so line these up 
line these up first. Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm just going to put this one down here, and I'm going to say 2D equals 4E plus 10. Oops, getting too aggressive. Okay, so now I have my two equations. They have the Ds, the Es, and the constants. Now, in order for me to add or subtract these, I have to have something with the same coefficient here. So I'm going to say I'm going to do 2 times equation 2. 2 times equation 2, that's going to give me 6 Ds and 12 Es and 30. Remember, every term. Now, the first equation, to make this a 6, I'd have to multiply it by 3. So that's going to be 6d equals 12e plus 30. Oh no, look what's going to happen. If I subtract these two equations, I'm going to get zeros everywhere, right? Zero equals zero. So what does that mean? Do you remember what that means if they're all the same? So if I get zero d's equals zero e's, zero d equals zero e plus zero. So it doesn't matter what I put in for D or E, they're always going to be, the left side will always be equal to the right side. So that means that these are the same lines and therefore there are an infinite number of solutions because the lines are on top of each other. Infinite number of of solutions. Okay, so that was kind of a tricky one. It was a trick. Okay, this equation here. Now you always have two options. You can eliminate the M's or you can eliminate the N's. So if I want to get rid of the M's, I can multiply this by 4 and this by 3 so that they're both 12. So you want to have like a nice constant in front here. You're not going to say I'm going to multiply this by 2. That would be 6m's. How do I make 6 out of a 4? No, 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 no. Nice easy one. Or these, you could get rid of the n's. I could say I'm going to make this 20 and this 20 by multiplying this by 5 and this by 4. Right? It's your choice. It doesn't matter. You get the same answer. So I'm going to, I'm going to choose the get rid of eliminate. I'm going to write it over here. I'm going to eliminate the end just because I feel like it. So to eliminate n, I want the coefficients to be the same. Don't worry about the signs, okay? Don't worry about the signs. Just make the coefficient numbers the same. So I'm going to do 5 times equation 1. I shouldn't have put a circle around that, but you get it. 5 times equation 1, so that's 15m plus 20n equals minus 5. And I'm going to do 4 times equation 2. 4 times, because that's going to give me a 20 here. Don't worry that these aren't the same, right? 16m, because we're going to leave one, one variable standing, equals minus 88. Okay, now I'm all set. Now they have different signs. So same sign subtract, different signs I'm going to add, right? Add them together. So 15 and 16 is 31 M's. These disappear. And adding these together, minus 5 plus minus 88 is minus 93. And I divide by 31. And I get M is equal to minus 3. Isn't that cute? So remember, don't stop just because you got that one done. You need the other coordinate, coordinate because you're looking for a point of intersection. So plug m is minus 3 into one of these equations. I'm going to pick the first one. So 3 times minus 3 plus 4n is equal to minus 1. So that's negative 9. I'll do it the long way. Okay, so as I wrap this up, I'm hoping that this is helping you out and that you've subscribed. Please subscribe. It's a nice thing to do. It helps support the channel and encourages me to make more videos for you. And uh, the more subscriptions you have and the more activity you have, the more people will come to the site. The happier I will be that more people are getting math help for free. Okay, so whoops. 
I'm talking too much. Can't talk and write. So minus 3 and 2. Don't forget a concluding statement. This is just as important as anything else that you've done here. Minus 3, 2 is the point. I'm going to write it all out this time. Point of intersection. Okay, again, like I said in the next lesson, I'll do fractions and decimals. And I hope this has helped you understand how to use elimination. Bye for now.